Hi, how's it going? This is Reza of Collin. I'm here to review J.P. Betancourt's continuing blog series, The Return of Dark Shadows, Connecting the Dots. This picks up in the old house. You have Angelique, who, or sorry, you have Barnabas, who's waiting for Angelique. And he's getting very impatient. You know how there's characters where it's one thing to feel like you're being played and then you're really thinking yeah yeah I'll, I'm probably getting played <laughs> that's gotta be part of this is mood but I, I will say the interaction here is very interesting and unique you have you know he's frustrated with her because he's just sitting there in the old house waiting for her and when she comes back in he confronts her that you lied, you said it was Julia, and I was eavesdropping <laughs> on her and Carolyn, and she acted like, no, and, you know, she tries to sway him and say, no, no, of course, you know, she's not going to admit to it, and he doesn't believe her again, and Barnabas knows Angelique up and down, so it's hard to convince him, you know, to go back to trusting her right away. And these two, you know, him having that that psychic connection with her was really good. I like that when he she was touching him, and then later, you know, she pulled back like, and then she forgot about it. <laughs> she put her hand on her shoulder like, "No, you need to trust me." Well, if you mess, I'll just I'll just kill him. Kill who? Curtis Winters, you know. <laughs> you know, he knows she's in love with him but what he doesn't know is Curtis Winters is the one that staked him in a heart and I find that really intriguing because here you have Barnabas who is now willing to kill Curtis Winters over the fact of okay you, you care about that guy you care about that son of a bitch yeah I'll, I'll just kill him at any, any given time I want I don't give a shit <laughs> I love that. It's like, it's like you have Barnabas. I will kill Curtis Winters. No, no big deal. <laughs> he doesn't, though. I want to stress that. And now Angelique has to be concerned because now, even though she still knows that Curtis is the one that staged Barnabas. That's sort of something she's got to still protect, but it's also something she's got to put on the back burner because now if he finds out any more information, if she lies to him or she gets caught in another lie, she, Curtis is going to be dead. It ain't going to matter. And that's not something she's wanting. Yes, she does want the power, which I love the greed aspect of Angelique here. Here's a woman who has power, but she wants some more of it. And so does Barnabas, though. And that's sort of something that Angelique has kept appealing to him and that she saw back with him here. It's like, you will have power. Now, does he completely trust her? I would say no, but I would say, though, too, he's conflicted. He's... He understands why his family tried to kill him, but he's upset they tried to do it. He doesn't trust Angela because he, kn he knows she lies and can't be trusted. But at this moment, she did, save, she did save him. So he's sort of trusting her for now. And it's it, curious to see where this goes from here, where you have Barnabas and Angelique. And Barnabas is at a... I think, I would dare say, you know, from a reader's aspect, that each reader is going to have their own point, that he's at a turn, he's at a, at a, not necessarily a turning point, but what I would call a decision point of who do you really want to be, and that's something that I think we're going to find out definitely down the road. Um, so I love this interaction here between them two. Because it was very cat and mouse. It was very classic old school, but new school feel of the two characters. Quinn Devereux, my new favorite character. Her interaction, she wants to get the hell out of town. This woman just saw 
a halfway werewolf transformation. Yeah, I'd, I'd be wanting to get the hell out of town too, girl. Um, but you find out that Quinn Devereaux is actually related to Julia Hoffman, which was... I love the way JP did this. I'm Listen, link is going to be in the description. Go read this. This was well done and well... How JP wrote this out was very well done. Um, good job. <laughs> Sorry. But I love the interaction between Alexandra and Quinn Devereaux. You know, she, you know, Quinn, or sorry, Alexandra is th threatened. Not basically, she did threaten uh, Dr. Jeffrey Shaw, but she has feelings for Andrew because of having Christopher's DNA and because Claudia, who, you know, was a witch, affected her in a certain way. She, by touching. Um, Quinn she saw the transformation and she asked how Andrew was now Quinn doesn't know that you know Alexandra has this so she's like oh, he, he's, he's fine she lied her ass off but Alexandra knows better uh, and I think the two sorry my hands the two biggest X factors in this in this story are going to be I know Dr. Shaw is a huge one but the two to me are going to be Alexandra and Quinn and I, I'm not discluding Andrew here trust me but I think those two are going to be huge factors down the road because I think for them two there's going to be some decisions they have to make especially Quinn and especially Alexandra of Quinn of do I really want to continue to help Jeffrey Shaw who who's a complete fucking mess, psycho bro no, Norman Bates ain't got shit on Dr. fucking Andrew Shaw okay that motherfucker is out of his goddamn mind but in the same sense so too I, I say that in a gist but though too he, he's not completely psycho he's just somewhat psychotic now, he will kill somebody. That That's for damn sure. Listen, he doesn't give a shit if he sheds blood as long as it helps his son. But, though, too, it has to benefit him or his son. And that's something... Dr. Shaw is a very wicked and evil man. He, he ain't nice. This, is, this ain't Mr. fucking Rogers here. This is... This is this would be the opposite of Mr. Rogers. Um, but... So he's very evil. And back to Quinn and uh, Alexandra. I think they're going to come into play with Dr. Shaw in a certain way. I don't. I'm just. That's just my opinion. That's just my opinion. Um, I don't know that for certain. But that's my opinion. I think those two are definitely going to be. To me those are the two characters to watch. Most of all. I think in my opinion. Um. I love the Maggie Evans painting, just like her dad did. <clears throat> she does not trust Serena Belmore, and nor should she. I really love the heartfelt interaction between her and Serena. It wasn't completely heartfelt, but by the end, it sort of was. I don't think Serena... Did Serena win over Maggie? No. But I think, you know... All this is leading up to decisions by every character, really. Not just the ones I'm mentioning, but the ones now you're hearing. Serena as well. Maggie. Is she ever going to completely trust Serena? Should she? Now, if you've already read this story, you know the answer is no. Because Serena got, got a contact from Dr. Shaw. And that's going to be another X factor. Is Serena Belmore in all this? And is Dr. Shaw really... Wanting her helpers, he just wanting to kill her. He's definitely wanting to kill some people, that's for sure. <laughs> He's not shy about set, shedding blood. Um, and, and really, too... Sorry. What I'm most curious about with Serena is... 
yeah, she loves Sebastian, and that's fine. But also, to you know, that you have, it's like Maggie said, you took a life. You know, you, you help take a life to save one. You know, it's it's conflicting. And it's hard to sort of trust someone that, you know, you okay, you're in a jam, but it's how you got out of that jam. I like the uh, Loomis uh, Govern Sheriff thing. That's how you find out about Quinn, which is really, really intriguing. And oh, here, I want to get. I think I missed something. I think I missed one thing. No, I didn't. I got it all. I'll be damned. <laughs> I thought I missed something in this. But I didn't, so. <laughs> I really try to get everything on this video, and it's like, did, did I, I have to go back. Did I miss something? Did I miss something? No, I didn't. Um, But, <laughs> you know, this actually closed with Maggie and him. Or Serena and them, but Serena and Jeffrey Shaw. But so, you know, there's a lot to to me, again, to reevaluate this this is all leading up to decisions by each of these characters, Barnabas, you know, and to me Angelique has made her decision, I would say. She's just gotta keep suckering Barnabas into it. Barnabas, I don't feel has made his complete decision. Alexandra, Quinn, Dr. Shaw, he, he, he's made probably his decision. What a dick. Um, but <laughs> that is one of the best heels I've ever read in a Dark Shadow story is Dr. Jeffrey Shaw. That is, if I could clap, I can't clap because I'm, my other hand is holding this damn thing. If I could clap, I would. That is one of the best heels I've ever read. Um, he's just, he's so unlikable, and he is. It's just, you just want to... It's sort of like how Darth Vader's choking the guy. Your lack of faith, that's sort of what I want to do to Dr. Shaw. It's like... Okay. But, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Tomorrow... I'm going to be Skyping with uh, fellow YouTuber and friend Daniel Culver Killenberg. We're going to be discussing the Resident Evil 2 game uh, tomorrow. And on the 4th, we're going to do another video discussing the little umbrella going off uh, Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. So, thank you guys. You guys have a, or, yeah, Resident Evil 7. You guys have a great one. I'll see you tomorrow.